In this video, we are going to see how to apply nodal analysis technique to solve a problem with dependent sources present in the circuit. Here is the problem. Though it is looking a very simple problem, but some concepts we will explain with respect to this problem. So over here, only two sources are given. Out of that, one is an independent voltage source and another is a dependent voltage source, which is 3V1, where the voltage is dependent upon the voltage across this 6 ohm. So basically, the voltage of this voltage source depends upon the voltage of 6 ohm. Let's solve it by a nodal analysis. So if we see carefully in this problem, this is a node because we have seen node is a point where three or more branches are connected. So this is another node. So in all, in a circuit, we'll be having two nodes because these two points are joined by the same wire. Hence, I can say this entire thing is a one node. So in all, in the circuit, we are having a two node. Out of that, one we will take as a reference. So it is always better to take this as a reference. So only one node we get and the potential of that node, let's mark this as V1. So V1 is this voltage. So in order to avoid a confusion, we can mark this potential as Vx. So let's consider this as X node with a potential Vx. Let's mark all branch currents. Now here we have to take care. While marking the current for the resistor across which voltage is given, we have to mark the current such a way that the polarity will be maintained. What does that mean? If this is a plus and minus is given by them, in order to support this polarity, current has to flow in this direction. So for this complete branch, the current will be in this manner. This is very, very important. If you change the current direction, the entire problem will go wrong. So it is very, very essential. Whenever there is a voltage given across any of the resistor, we have to mark the current such a way that polarity will be maintained. For rest of the branches, we can select any random current direction. So now we are ready to apply KCL to the only node present in the circuit, which is node X. So at node X, there are four branches are connected. Out of that, one is incoming and the remaining three are outgoing. So the incoming current is this which is started at a reference and ending on a Vx. In the direction of current, there is a voltage source which changing the polarity minus two plus in the current direction. So minus two plus is nothing but a voltage rise. So it's a plus two upon the resistance of this branch, which is 10. So this is the incoming current. Let's write the equation for all outgoing currents. Let's start for this. So it is started with Vx ending on a reference and the resistance is 30 ohm. This is started at Vx ending on reference. But in the current direction, minus 2 plus a voltage source, that means a voltage rise and the value is 3V1 resistance is 14 and third branch is this now see here the entire thing is a one branch which has started from vx and ending on reference and the total resistance in the branch is 8 
so we will get this equation in the equation v1 is the variable which required a substitution so we need to write a substitution equation So we need a substitution for a V1. So V1 is nothing but voltage across 6 ohm. And I can say by Ohm's law, it is 6 multiplied by I6 ohm. So this is I6 ohm for the equation we have already written. So it is 6 multiplied by Vx minus 0 by A. So basically it is 3 by 4 into Vx or we can say it is 0 0.75 Vx. So we got a substitution for the V1. So let's simplify this equation, which will be minus Vx by 10 plus 2 by 10. I can say it is 1 by 5 equal to Vx by 30 over here plus Vx by 40 plus I will take first coefficient separately which is 3 by 40 and V1 if I substitute which is nothing but 0.75 Vx and finally plus Vx by 8 so this is the equation we get let's take all Vx terms together and all constants together so it's better to take this Vx on this side and this constant on left hand side. So ultimately we will get a equation where Vx will have the coefficient 1 by 30 plus 1 by 40 plus 0 0.75 plus 1 by 8. Do not forget to take this Vx on this side. So plus 1 by 10. So let's count all the coefficient 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So its verification is correct. Equal to 1 by 5. Already there. This will go on this side. So minus 3 by 40. Upon solving this equation, we'll get the value of Vx. So upon solving this, we'll get a Vx as 0 0.1 to 1 volt but this is not the answer that we are supposed to get we have to get the value VAB so if you see carefully VAB VAB is nothing but minus 3 times V1. Why minus? Because the polarity of A is negative with respect to B. So V1 is 0 0.75 Vx. So basically this is nothing but minus 3 into 0 0.75 Vx. And Vx we got the value. So upon substituting we can write this as minus 3 into 0 0.75 into Vx is 0 0.1 to 1. So finally, you will get VAB as minus 0 0.2722 volt. This is the final answer. Thank you.